in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to do lovely, crisp, spooky, classic basing in no time at all with just dry brushing. Welcome to another Artist Opus video. We are going to be achieving this gorgeous, spooky basing uh, in no time at all. I really love the effect that you get with this type of work. Um, it's all rough and ready. Nothing about this is precise whatsoever. Um, it's pretty fast considering and it's an amazing way to frame any army. It doesn't have to be an army of ghosts. Obviously that looks very appropriate on kind of spooky dried grass basing with skulls everywhere. But uh, we are in the Games Workshop world here. So if you don't have skulls on your base, what are you doing really? <laughs> um, if you like the video, please let us know. Uh, please subscribe, hit that bell notification for future content. And of course, we're gonna have the Night Haunt available as well. So if you wanna know how to paint the entire thing, the base and the model, then just check out our other videos. Okay, so believe it or not, this wet mess is uh, how we're going to be making a beautiful base. So our base coat is Dark Reaper, we've stippled that all over and I've got two colours. I've got um, Rust Grey, which is one of the Space Wolf colours, and I've got a Bad and Blackout. And what I'm doing is, after a fairly heavy stippled base coat of the Dark Reaper, I'm picking the raised areas or the protruding areas and I'm stippling them very roughly with the Rust Grey kind of fading that out a little bit there. You can do um, not uh, too unsubtle blending just by poking here. And then you have to do this as the last step because obviously it's a far darker color. Taking a little bit of the black, I'm gonna stipple that into the middle of this rock. Now that's just because I want the rock to get brighter towards the edges. And this is a pretty fast way to be able to achieve that as well as just higher contrast in general. If you want to uh, push this black into the recesses, that's absolutely fine. So we're looking pretty messy here. Uh, make sure you take everything right to the edges. We'll fix that at a later date, but um, we're gonna come back in the next steps and polish this beautifully. Okay, so the next step is to use our size small. Just wake up our dampening pad a little bit here. So, Going back to our initial highlight color. Just working off any excess on the brush and we're softly hitting the base with its first dry brush. I'm gonna start on the sand areas, uh, the, the smaller areas towards the bottom and then, only then when I'm, I'm happy that the brush isn't gonna do anything unexpected, I'm gonna use it to carefully pick up all that lovely texture on the slate. So the nice thing about this is that what we've got going on here is we had a really rough pre-shaded base coat, but the moment we put down this first coat, none of that matters whatsoever um, because we're adding something that the eyes are just gonna concentrate on more naturally. And the rough blend in the background, um, it doesn't disappear. It in fact turns into a pretty smooth blend. So hitting it all over, super fast at this point, we've laid some good foundations. So I'm going to just jump to Fenrisian Grey now, which is a little bit lighter. Be pretty careful with this, I don't want it to go on too heavy. Using the small here, I generally prefer bigger brushes, but I'm using the small here because I need to be able to get into the recesses. And you can get into them however you want, wiping, uh, twisting, um, whatever helps get the brush in there absolutely fine and then again once I've done the other areas and I'm happy with the amount of paint that's on the brush and the amount of paint that's leaving the brush most importantly I can go back to our slate and add in some detail without any worry pretty much done now just a couple of final finishing touches and we are there okay so moving swiftly on love how fast this is these bases look incredible for the time that's put into them Doing stuff like this really is worth it. It's gonna take you like one minute extra base and over an entire army or a regiment or whatever. It really does do wonders. So I've got white scar as with the previous steps, but I'm going more carefully now to hit these edges. This is probably the bit that really makes the biggest difference in terms of things beginning to pop and work. This really does help stuff jump out. using my texture palette and my thumb, really making sure that I'm not gonna get any nasty surprises when I bring my brush to the model. 
and if I can see any patterning on it, rather than running down these ridges, I'm always trying to run across because they'll just get picked up more easily. All my dry brushing and my painting I've taken to the very edge of the model, and that means when we do give it a black base rim, uh, which is the only appropriate color for base rims in my opinion, um, we'll have a lovely crisp kind of framed edge. So that is it pretty much for the painting. So as we have used some dry brushing, I'm just going to use exactly the same dry brush and any little light powders that we've got collected around the model and try and work out. That'll just make the next stages look a little bit less smooth. And then it's just time using a size four. This is a wonderful brush. Helps you work extremely fast, holds a lot of paint. I'm just gonna carefully go around and give that a black base room. The black base room is really, really what helps it pop. And with this base, I built up the base's rim even further, uh, just using green stuff. Oh, there's a bit of sand there, we can get rid of that. Um, just using green stuff, and that means that we've got an even larger uh, kind of framing aspect. Now, because it is a homemade base, I've seen a couple of little imperfections there. Easily fixed. Grab it with my X-Acto. Anything that just needs popping off. We're good. And no one but us is any the wiser. So, there we go. We're now into detailing. So, a little bonus here. I have Carrick Stone in my airbrush. And I've got a little skull on a stick. I'm airbrushing it from 45 degrees. So hitting it from the top. And from 45 degrees from the sides, but I don't want to get it at any kind of like I'm not getting it at this angle, all the angles are from above. The Citadel Skulls have got such a lovely shape, this is a really efficient way to get a nice paint job on them. So the next stage we've got a Screaming Skull. Again, hitting it from above, but this time pretty much only from just past vertical. Okay, just got a little bit of white scar in, and as I said, we're going from the very top here. Going carefully, there we go. So I've actually decided that I want to push the contrast a little bit more on this. So I have my white scar, and I'm very carefully going from the edges. Ideally guys, you do this before doing your black base rim, so I'm taking a bit more care than you'll need to. You won't have to proceed with nearly as much caution as I am here. All right, tufts. So I've got a selection of tufts here. I've also got my little skull on a stick and I'm gonna take a few of these. I might chop them in half, but I'm gonna take a few of them then carefully push them where I want them with tweezers. And once I've decided their position, I'll just stick them down with a little bit of super glue. Can use PVA, but super glue gets a faster bond. All that remains now is to stick a suitably ghosty model on our base. Oh, it's gonna look amazing. Ooh, which way around? We'll put them this way. These models are quite stooped, so the angle of the slate here is actually going to play to our advantage because we can make it so our model has more kind of uh, visibility through to its undersides. Okay, so we've set our guy on a gorgeous, perfectly uh, kind of toned base for this type of model. Plenty of skulls, uh, some uh, red rosy like tufts, and that looks the bomb. If you had this over a unit, it would look absolutely incredible. All right, so I'm super pleased with this. Uh, as you can probably tell, I think we've got rid of anything that looked rough about those first coats where you probably thought that I was doing a really messy job. That's all gone now, it's all forgotten about, and um, it, it's not really a worry. So um, this type of approach works for any base, and you can mix up these colors. You could put in more green, you could put in a deeper blue, you could wash it afterwards, you could go in there and do some glazing, you could dry brush it right, 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 right up with like a super off-white heavy highlight to make it look really cartoony. It's a really flexible method and most importantly it's really fun and fast too. I love playing with tufts, as you know by now, and um, the little trick with the skulls and having them ready just to stick and nestle around for a point of contrast is just 
gold dust as well as far as I'm concerned. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Anyone getting involved in the comments below, we really, really appreciate your input. We take it all on board and it all goes into the list. So if you want to see something in a future video, then let us know. Thank you very much for tuning in.